In this video, I want to show you four creative tricks that you can do with the error bars visual. We're gonna go through step-by-step step how you can create four different unique visuals using just the error bars visual. We're gonna look at some of the limitations that this solution has, and also how you can vote to expand these functionalities further. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So if you didn't know already, error bars allow you to visualize uncertainties in your data. And the Power BI team has released it sometime this year, and I even covered how to use it in a separate video. So if you want to know the basics of how to use the error bars visual, go check out that video. And recently they added some new custom elements in the error bars that we can take advantage of and create new visuals without importing custom ones ourselves. So let me show you how to do that. So before we start, let's go through this report that I pre-prepared so that we can get started with the visuals already. So here we have a few different tables from our Northwind dataset. We have a calendar table for our uh, date time calculations. We have order details, which has a list of all the orders that have been made along with the quantity and price. We've created a custom column sales, which calculates the total sales by multiplying quantity and unit price. We have the orders table, which lists out the order when the order was made, so order date, and products listing out all the products that were ordered, along with the categories of those products. I've also pre-created the model here, so you don't really need to worry about how these tables are related to each other. So first I want to visualize the category name and the sales as a table first. So the first one that I want to show how to create is the lollipop chart, which allows you to show the data point with a circular marker on where the data point is meant to be with a line coming from the base, which is why uh, it looks like a lollipop. So to do this, we will start by converting this table into a line chart like this. So we will have all of our categories at the bottom and a line value here on the chart. So from here, we'll start by just modifying some of the visual elements first in the line to prepare it to create the lollipop visual. So first, let's remove a few things here. So the x-axis will remove the title. That's a bit redundant. Uh, same here, instead of the title, we'll also remove the y-axis because we won't need it in our example. From the lines, we want to remove the stroke because we don't want to show the line because we want to show markers instead. So we're gonna reduce the stroke width to zero. And instead of showing the lines, we want to show the markers, which will be the candy point of the lollipop. We'll make it slightly bigger and we'll change the color to something different. And that will be the last point of our data. We also want to enable data labels so that we can signify what those values are on those different categories. Under data labels, you want to make sure that the data label is always above the data point, not below, because we will obviously add the bar part of the lollipop at the bottom of the data point. So now that that's done, we can now go and add our error bar. So we can go to the analysis part of the visualizations pane under error bars, enable it. So from here, it will ask you to add two things. It will ask you to add upper bound and or a lower bound. So the upper bound and the lower bound, we will leave the type as by field because we want to set the absolute value of uh, the error bars itself. So in this case, we want to add the upper bound. We want to use the sales that we have currently calculated, which in this case will be the data point where it starts. And then the lower bound, we want to always set to zero because that's where the bar would 
be coming from. Now, we don't really have anything like that here, so we can just simply create a new measure for it. So I'm just gonna create it here. I'm just gonna name it base, and we'll just set its value to zero. For the lower bound, hit add data, then we'll look for our base, and you will see that it will now create a bar for us similar to a the handle part of the lollipop. We just want to make a few changes to this bar to make it look a little bit cleaner. So first we'll remove the marker, uh, that is the, the line at the bottom. We'll make the width slightly thicker and we'll make it colored similar to what it uh, has on the lollipop part. We, if you can see there is a bit of a border, you can't see it, but you can just simply re remove the border by making it zero pixels. And that's it. With those simple steps, you already have a lollipop chart that works. And what's great is that this chart, even though we've customized it here in Power BI, you keep the interactivity on it, even when you do some slicing and dicing in your report page. So what do I mean by that? So for example, I'm going to add the year month here as a slicer. I'm going to change this into a list. And I'm gonna change this into a horizontal so that we can have it here on the top. So what we will do, or what I want to do is, for example, for September, this is the sales by category for September 1996, October. You will see that the lollipop changes accordingly. It doesn't lose that interactivity, even with the amount of uh, customization that we've done. So I'm gonna move this to the side here and let's go to the next one, which is the dumbbell charts, which helps you compare against different data points. So in this case, for example, uh, let's say we want to see the current value of those categories. So how much sales did we have for each of those categories? And we want to show its comparison against the previous months. So before we get started with the visual, we actually need to prepare a new measure here. So the sales previous month, which uh, will simply be our lower bound for our uh, error bar chart. So let's start by creating a new measure here. I'm gonna name this sales PM. We're gonna wrap it with a calculate. We're gonna take the value from the sales, sum it up. And in the filter context of our calculates, we're gonna use previous month and say, give me the previous month's date. So now if we simply just show I will just show you how it looks like at the moment. Uh, sales, previous month and current month. So this one is current month, this one is previous month. If I deselect that, you will see that it sales previous month gives us the sales. For example, for 1996, it gives us the total sales for July 1996. So this is exactly what we wanted. So now to make it easier for us, I'm going to simply just copy this visual that we've already created. Uh, for the lollipop chart. We will first go to our analytics pane here in the error bars. So the upper bound and the lower bound we need to sort of modify. So the base will need to be the sales for the previous month. So that when we make a selection here, we will have the visual like this. But obviously because we have removed the marker for the lollipop chart, we need to bring it back. So we're going to bring it back here. Uh, not that one. We need to change the marker size to match what we currently have. So I think I believe it's about 10. And to distinguish it with the current month sales, we're just gonna change its color to gray so that you can distinguish that is the value before and what is the current value now. So this is how a dumbbell chart looks like. So as you notice, as we change the context of the year month, it gives us a different dumbbell showing us the difference between the previous month and the current month. There's an obvious limitation here, which is that the data label is always anchored to be above the current value. And even with the auto 
uh, set enabled, it won't fix the data label issue. So, so in this case, if you're creating a dumbbell chart using the error visuals, I would just highly suggest that you disable the data labels here and instead enable the Y axis so that you can see uh, instead the values on the left hand side. The next chart that I want to show is the lipstick chart, which is essentially a bar chart on top of another bar chart which uh, essentially is showing the same type of data as the dumbbell chart where, where you're comparing one data point compared to another. In this case, in our scenario, we want to compare the current month sales versus the previous month. So first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by copying the lollipop chart once again. We're going to just move these. So this one, we are going to have a bar chart. So we're going to convert this into a bar chart like this. Now, what we want is a bar chart at the back and bar chart at the front, signifying the current sales. Now, the bar chart at the back will be your y-axis here in your clustered bar chart. Now, for that, we want to show the sales previous month as our chart at the back. So for this case, we want to disable the data labels column, set it to gray to signify that it's the value for previous sales month. We want to then go to our analysis part and add our error bar. So we want to enable this uh, by field. The upper bound would be our sales and our lower bound would be our base, like that. So we will need to just modify a couple of things in the bar. First of all, we'll need to change the color of it to signify that this is our current month sales. We will need to change the marker to none. Make the bar as thick as possible, which I think we can just go all the way up to 10. Uh, marker size will be zero, border size will be zero because we have no markers or borders. Now you will see that the bar chart at the back is still a little bit thick. So we can reduce that actually by going to the column under spacing, just increase the padding, which will reduce the size of that chart at the back. You will see now when we filter, our chart, it will show you the current month value versus last month. The last chart that I want to show you is a combination of lollipop charts and bar chart, which shows you a bar chart at the back of your lollipop charts, comparing the current month sales versus the previous month, the same as we have done so far with all of our different charts here. So first let's copy and paste one of these charts here. And let's convert them into a combo chart. So let's choose this one, line and clustered column chart. So in the column Y axis, we want our sales previous month as we have here. And on the line axis, we want to set the current sales. So similar to what we have right here. Now let's do some change. Let's make some changes here. So let's change once again, remove the stroke and add the same way that we were doing with the lollipop chart earlier. So we will go and add the marker, make the marker slightly thicker. So let's make it 10 like this. And then on the analysis parts under error bars, we can set the values here for our error bar. Uh, let's remove, well, actually let's make the width slightly smaller. And there you go. So you now have the total sales for the current month as a lollipop. And then you have the previous month sales at the back as a bar chart, which will change the context depending on which day or which month you select here in our slicer at the top. And that's it. So those were the four different creative ways that you can create custom charts in Power BI without importing any custom visuals yourself. I want to give credit to Carlos Bergamo Scarso. I'm pretty sure I mispronounced it. Um, and it's someone I found on LinkedIn who published these genius tricks that I was really excited to discover and build for myself. There's currently a petition 
in the Power BI forums, which I'll leave a link in the description box below, suggesting further improvements to the error bars. So if you have time, please vote for it so that the Power BI team notices it and potentially include it as part of the roadmap for future updates. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.